But let's move in through our 20 through 11. I feel like we had a, I'm, I'm going to be honest, you know, sometimes you, you let you let go of a shot and you just feel it's not going in. <laughs> I, that last segment, it was a bad segment. I'm going to be honest. I was, I was off. So let's just make sure that, you know, the last two segments are good. We're going through our 20 through 11. Starting off at 20 of the Los Angeles Clippers, we have Danilo Gallinari was injured last year, um, hence why he is so low. Some people might think he is low. Um, we also don't have that many Clipper fans, so probably no one will care. Um, at 19, we have Jabari Parker of now the Chicago Bulls. At 18, we have Carmelo Anthony of now the Houston Rockets. At 17, we have Bog, Don, Bo, Bo, Bojan. Bojan. Bog, Bogdan. I, I, I knew how to say it before the podcast, and then the camera goes on. Bogdan like, Bogdan. <laughs> we know how to say it. Yes. We know how to say it, and we can't say it. I just right call him now. Bogey. Bogey. Was it 17. Bogdan, Bogey Bogdanovich? of the Sacramento Kings. Ricky says it right. First try. What Bogdan Bogdanovich. Bogdan Bogdanovich. <laughs> we have Bogey of the Sacramento Kings. Yeah, just call Bogey. We all, everybody, everybody who follows Sacramento, everybody in Sacramento just calls him Bogey. And also, if you heard us before the podcast, for two straight hours, we were getting Boyan right, and we were getting Bogdan right. Yep. Um, but anyways, at 16, we have Tim Hardaway Jr. of the New York Knicks. At 15, we have Rudy Gay of the San Antonio Spurs. At 14, we have each one more of the New Orleans Pelicans. At 13, we have Boyan Bogdanovich of the Indiana Pacers. At 12, we have Robert Covington. I was going to say Rocco because that's also that's his, his name. name. Yeah. Uh, of the Philadelphia 76ers. <laughs> and at 11, we have Will Barton of the Denver Nuggets. And let's jump into mm. the uh, probably the <laughs> big elephant right. of the room uh, at 18. Um, I had mm-hmm. Carmel Anthony r- ranked at, let's see, um, 11. Dave had Mello ranked at, where did you put him? 13. 13. Okay. Mine just says stay mellow. Oh, you have stay mellow. That's why. Okay. Uh, so I had mellow at 11. Dave had him at 13. He ends up at 18. Mm-hmm. Ricky, tell oh. the people why you put Carmelo Anthony at 30. Because he shouldn't be a starter. Shouldn't be a starter for that Rocket team. Okay. We, How many players original, on this list shouldn't be a starter? We Well, a lot of them. But that's Okay. So the why are we yelling at Carmelo um, Anthony and tanking no, his rankings? It's not, I'm, I'm not yelling at him. It's PJ. I was on the. We originally had PJ Tucker in the spot. I would much rather have P.J. Tucker in the spot than Carmelo. Carmelo to, to me, the Carmelo to me just... is a guy that's gonna come, who should come off the bench. He's not a starter anymore in this NBA, so I put him at 30. Okay, so you'd rather have P.J. Tucker and Ryan Anderson in the starting lineup over Carmelo Anthony? Yes. Why? This Mello? Why? Because what Mello showed last year is that he's not a starter. He is past what, his Did prime. Ryan Anderson show that? Well, I mean, Ryan well, no, Anderson, no, Carmelo that's Anthony a question. is a little bit of a debate. I would still go at Ryan Anderson. Regular Why? season, Ryan Anderson's fine. They're still yeah. scoring 140 a night. It doesn't really matter. Well, because, okay, but also, because I'd but, go P, PJ at the three, and I'm not going to play... Mello at the four, I'll play Ryan Anderson at the four and have Mello come off the bench. Why wouldn't you play Mello at the four? He because played it last year. He played I, don't, fine. I would rather play Ryan Anderson. He played fine. The that's, that's the <laughs> I mean, he played offensively, fine. he played fine. Again, this, yeah. this Rockets team was no. somehow, even though they don't have great defenders, I mean, outside of like P.J. Tucker and formerly Trevor Ariza mm-hmm. um, and Clint Chris Paul. Oh, and Chris Paul. Sorry. Uh, it was a mistake. It was a mistake. <laughs> it's been a rough day. It's not Shut as bad, as, it's not as, bad as calling Stanley Johnson the next... DeMar DeRozan, <laughs> Detroit. Um, that was so good. <laughs> but, again, like with people crapping consistently on James Harden's defense, mm-hmm, even true. though it's not that bad, right. um, having Ryan Anderson in there, um, even though, you know, uh, Eric uh, Gordon isn't great, he isn't terrible defensively. Like, yep. again, they didn't have any crazy great defenders outside of Chris Paul um, and Trevor Ariza. Like, they weren't supposed to be a top five defensive team is what I'm trying yeah, to no, say they, with the players they on their played, team. They, yet they exceeded did. expectations. P.J. Tucker was able to guard basically two through five and, and phenomenal. And Ryan Anderson, we saw him being abused in short minutes on the court. He literally had to be pulled off the court in multiple series because they just went at him and got free buckets every single time. So as much as I want to say regular season, we'll probably see Ryan Anderson at the four. I agree for our rankings. We made the right call mm-hmm. in putting Carmelo at the three, PJ at the four, because that is probably the lineup that's going to matter when it matters. And, I mean, Ryan Anderson, 70% of his shots last year were three-pointers. He knows um, his job. And he shot 38% from from three. I just think with Melo, it's going to give them more opportunities offensively to attack. It's yeah. going to open up James Harden to shoot from the outside. It's going to open up P.J. Tucker to op- shoot from the outside a little bit more. And Melo, even then, he still shot 40%, 40% of his shots for threes last year. So he can still fit into this lineup. I think, yes, Carmelo Anthony was bad, but he's not Ryan Anderson bad. And let's be real, 
Carmelo Anthony still has value in the NBA, and maybe it is on the bench. But also, mm-hmm. I'm not benching Carmelo for Ryan Anderson, at least not yeah. right away, because it's still Have Carmelo that Anthony. conversation. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a dumb conversation, I think. Um, because, yeah. again, we're talking about Ryan Anderson, a guy that is extremely overpaid, is not athletically able to play basketball mm-hmm. at the pace that they want to play, and maybe Melo isn't either. But I think Melo deserves more of a shot than Ryan Anderson. Carmelo Anthony needs to have the same kind of moment this year that I think it was on the Dan Patrick show, and I brought this up before, mm-hmm. that Charles Barkley had in his The career. come to Jesus moment? Exactly. Charles Barkley was, hey, there's this kid behind me who's balling out. We need to get him more time. I'll come off the bench, coach, start him. Who is that kid? I, I'm saying that's what he was saying okay. in the interview. I think but, it was when yeah. he was with Phoenix. I, okay, but who's the, um, who's the kid behind him? No, Ryan Anderson, I'm saying, who's 33 years no, old? I'm saying it's different in that sense. Oh, that there's I'm no sorry. one behind yeah. Melo. <laughs> I want to jump on that too. But <laughs> in Melo's situation, maybe it's a hey. I can help this team more being with Eric Gordon leading the second team while Chris and James are getting rest. We can lead the second team, and our team doesn't miss a beat with those two off the floor. The upside is that you have one of the greatest offensive masterminds leading this team. So I think they're going to find a way to make it work regardless. Mm-hmm. And with the rotations, maybe they'll do some weird-ass like hockey rotations where they'll go you know, two on, two off, some shit like that. There's a chance we see that. Mm-hmm. I think Carmonte's problem last year was not his athleticism. It was his effort. And I think that playing with someone who is his best friend in uh, – Chris Paul is mm-hmm. is going to mean a lot. Playing on a winning team with a winning franchise around him right now. I know OKC was basically last year where that team was built on spite. Mm-hmm. Like, let's just be honest. Like, that's what Brody just breathes. I know he's a great teammate and everything, but I think you get to see a, a different mellow this year than we saw out of OKC. Well, I think he is going to be of more value to this Rockets team than he was to the Thunder the that, previous year. That's the thing is I don't think – I do I think that he is ever going to be the mellow of old? No. no. Um, I, I don't think it's that, but I still think he can be a valuable player if he does have that motivation. And maybe playing with CP3 will give him that. Um, and again, like you mentioned, he's not out of shape. Melo's still very in, much in shape. Yeah. Melo can go for 30 minutes a game. It's not a problem of, again, him not wanting to be there. Or it's not a problem of him not being able to be out there. Right. It's a problem of him not wanting to be there. And and again, it's it's something mentally with Carmelo Anthony that I feel like is holding him back. And I think that maybe you just throw him out there If he wants to be the starter, let him be the starter for the first five games. The Rockets are still going to win games whether he's coming off the bench or not and see if he can be a value next to Harden, next to Chris Paul, next to um, P.J. Tucker, and and next to Clint Capella. It's a long season. I think that the end of it, and when it comes postseason time, they're not going to be putting Ryan Anderson in the starting lineup. They're going to be putting Carmelo Anthony. Mm -hmm. So, um, And also, again, it's just the fact that he's at 18. Does he deserve to be a top 10 small forward anymore? No. I think we had him as a top 10 small forward last yep. year. We moved him over to a power forward. He was still a top 10 player. Is he still top 10 player at his position? Probably not. But is he still good and still you know, a guy that can put up 15 points per game? Yes. Yeah. You, you and, not, and, and not many guys below him and even guys like Bogey and Tim Hardaway Jr. right now and even Rudy Gay can say that. And that's why I think that at least 18 is just a little bit disrespectful to Carmelo. I think that's one of the easiest things to overlook when we're doing rankings and you're talking about players being better than the others is people – weirdly underrate guys who can score like they can just flat out get buckets for you and you got to remember back to the series that knocked out the rockets they had offensive struggles with chris paul out and going into the playoffs having another guy who they can lean on Mm -hmm. to get buckets a la the the Warriors being able to lean on Kevin Durant going or, solo. Or, or ISO. Will maybe come in and shoot a mid range well, if they need to. And even then, that's the Point thing. Being, I mean, yeah. He missed twenty seven mm-hmm. three pointers in a row. Yeah. Carmelo, yes, he can shoot from the outside, but also Melo can post up, put his back. They had the basket a similar and hit idea last year with ISO Joe, but ISO Joe was in retirement home. Like it yeah. was, it was too many years too late. Mm-hmm. I think this is. I think this is like the fruition of that. They they they're like maybe this could work for us as like an. Uh, plan C, and, and now they've got the guy in that they wanted in the first place. Maybe with Melo now, but may- maybe with Melo now being here, again, maybe it is a year too late. And we'll maybe see. we'll figure that yeah. out. Um, but again, Melo, 18 I think is a little bit polarizing. disrespectful. Um, and polarizing is a thing. Because again, I'm not a fan of Carmelo. Anymore. No, I don't it, think any of us th- really are. I think he, he should at least have that mindset of, if I need to go to the bench and that will help my team, then he should do that. I don't think he has that mindset. Um, and But again, I'm not going to bench him for Ryan Anderson. 
I don't think we're at that point yet. Um, but right below him is Jabari Parker at 19 and Danilo Gallinari. But let's talk about Jabari Parker. Two guys that were injured, Jabari and Danilo Gallinari. Uh, some Bulls fans might think that Jabari Parker is too low because a guy, you know, a, a guy that's being hyped up to be a you know, possible 20-point scorer for the Chicago Bulls, um, you know, just signed, obviously, on that, that that deal that I think it's two years for $42 million, but there's a lot of— uh, We can get out after the first year. Yeah, you can get out of the first year. Um, Jabari is a guy that, you know, for Bulls fans is expected to put up near 17 points per game to 20 points per game, um, but he's at 19 points uh, per game. Or Sorry, he's at 19 in our rankings. Um, mm-hmm. Why do you think he is so low, Ricky? And at least why did you rank him where you did at 19? Because to me, it's the same thing that you and I talked about last week with Zach Levine. Prove it to me. Like, I know what I saw in his 2016-2017 season, and that's great. That is great Jabari Parker. I would love to have a 20-point Jabari Parker score mm-hmm. on this Bulls team, but prove it to me. Prove that you can come off injury and earn that money. I, I get the contract, Bulls fans say, but it's only one year. If he doesn't play well, it doesn't matter. Still, if we're going to pay you $20 million a year, you got to earn that money this year in my mind. With that argument, though, mm-hmm. Zach Levine still ended up at 16 in our rankings, mm-hmm. so that's three higher than Jabari Parker in his rankings. And we were talking about this earlier. Mm-hmm. This is a ranking and a position that is very, very clear cut. Mm-hmm. I mean, like at the top, we have your guys that are stars. You have your KDs, you have your Kawhi Leonard's, yeah. you have your Paul George's. You're just, you're just giving away. And then, am I, <laughs> did I list it off in order? No, you're, you're fine. You're fine. Uh, but the, the thing that I was trying to say, though, yes. is right below the, you know, the cream of the crop mm-hmm. are guys that are very interchangeable. And yes. one thing with Jabari Parker is he does have a lot of potential. He has that potential to be a 20 point scorer. And looking at this list, how many guys can say that, even all the way up to those guys like you know Paul George, Jimmy Butler, Kawhi Leonard, Kevin Durant? How many of those guys below um, you know right. the cream of the crop can say that they can put up twenty a night? Yep. Here's the thing that changes it, and just looking, I'm going to compare Zach Levine in our rankings to Jabari Parker because they're both similar situation: sure. guys who can score, guys who can play well, but both coming off injuries. You look at our rankings just last week. I had Zach Levine at twenty one. Both of you guys had him at 14. And then this week with Jabari, I was tried to say consistent. I'm like, you know what? Zach Levine, I had him at 21. I got to have Jabari in that same range if possible. I couldn't have him in that same range. I had him a little bit higher at 19. You had him closer to where you had Zach Levine, 16, two spots lower. And then Dave had Jabari way lower than the rest of us at 23. It's because he doesn't know how to play small forward. And until I see him play... Any defense at small forward, I'm not putting him in my top 20. That, that's, remember, that's a me thing. Remember, Jabari Parker said you don't have to play defense. Right. Defense don't he's, matter. He's not wrong. <laughs> that's the bad thing. When it comes to money and contracts, him being able to put 20 night mm-hmm. heavily overweighs his ability to play defense at the three against you know legitimate threes. But with this argument, though, let's look at the Chicago Bulls. Are they known as a defensive team, Dave? Not even close. So why does that matter? Because if he's able to go into the offense and work efficiently, <laughs> yeah. it need, doesn't matter if he can't play defense. Because some I don't... guys that can play some lick of defense. Okay, but is it is Jabari? Yeah, Chris ex- Don Lowry is, and uh, Wendell Carter. Wendell Carter, Carter yeah. Um, but is the expectation that Jabari Parker signed for twenty million dollars plus a year to play defense? No. Well, so no then why are we expecting him to play defense and hurt? Because I'm his... I'm ranking people based off of what they are as a small forward, as mm-hmm. a wing player. As an overall he, player, he fulfills too. heavily on the offensive side. You know, he he is a mm-hmm. scorer. He is good on the inside. If he continues to hit consistency outside, totally fine. It, if that volume increases and in, in the um, accuracy maintains, accuracy is not the word I'm looking for, but efficiency, efficiency maintains with increased volume. It could be accuracy. All money, all money, totally worth the money for him. But right now, what I've seen is a player who, basically, he got pushed out of his own starting lineup because the 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 Bucks were worse with he and Giannis out there together because of floor spacing. So I look mm-hmm. at this Bulls team and I'm like, well. We're in a weird situation where he can play mid-range to down low more because we've got guys like Lowry who stretch the floor. Uh, we have Zach stretch the floor. We've got uh, everybody basically has an attempt at a three-point shot. So mm-hmm. I think he can find his niche on this Bulls team. My concern is really, like, can he play a full game? Like, like all-rounded, mm-hmm. like, defense and offense. Is he going to get to that point where it's serviceable enough to where he's not a net negative? And, I mean, go to our rankings last week. What did people complain to us about. We had a guy who is pure offense and we ragged on his defense in Devin Booker. Yep. 
We had him ranked lower than a guy in Drew Holiday that's not going to put up as many points as Dev Book does, I mean, but plays defense, too. But not Drew too is, many away. Not too many away, but it's like 24 to 19. Also, so it's Drew not, is near elite mm-hmm. defensively. Yeah, yeah. he's Where, cream and, and Booker, I'm not trying to bash Devin Booker. I'm not trying to turn this into it. Booker is very promising offensively. Would I say he's elite? At times, but I don't think he's consistent enough to be called elite yet. I mean, is he? Can he put up twenty five points per game? Yes. Obviously. He's also doing it on a massive, you know, massive usage. If yeah. he's able to come back and do it again, and maybe even put up like twenty seven, then yeah, I'll call him elite I mean, offensively. I, I, but, I'd, I'd be happier if he put up like twenty seven wins. You know, that's the thing. It's like again, it's the Suns. I'm sorry, we're <laughs> not winning. Your numbers, um, and that's cool. not really the debate we're having with Jabari no. Parker right now. But you know, because Ho- well, this Bulls well, the, team, the, are you going to? Well, no, but I'm, I'm just saying, like Drew Holiday, we gave oh, him a yeah. bl- plus because mm-hmm. his team went to the second round of the playoffs. Yeah, where he, Devin he, Booker, you know, again was the number he made one. Dame look like a bitch. That's sort of Drew Holiday, mm-hmm. like he and Rondo, mm-hmm. and even Etwan Moore extending over, like their their defense, and that's that's why I think the defense can't be underrated at this point because like we're ranking them as players and to be fair like but, you have to rank all of their ability to play okay but uh, then and again i mean just, let's look at carmelo and jabari parker yep both guys can't play defense but we've seen they, carmelo be able to play defense at times jabari i i'm confused seeing him try to play small forward defense that's where uh-huh. i'm like it's an unknown he hasn't done it in a couple years can, mm-hmm. and we'll see there there's the potential he claims to have dropped weight be more athletic I'm all about that. I'm all hope, but until I see it, I'm not putting them there. And also with the two knee surgeries, I mean, it's it's yeah. a fair, it's a fair, it's a fair. No, uh, I can see, criticism. I can see the upside though. Could I you? absolutely can. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to mention it. Um, and then obviously uh, another young guy that we can throw out there is a guy in, in bogey, um, in Bogdan Bogdanovich. Um, I, I found out why you couldn't say his name out loud was because there was a typo. Oh, was there? Uh, yeah, I just corrected it across the board. Was it B O D G A N? I was like, that ain't right. Okay. It was like, no wonder Sean can't read this. Ba- like, Bodgan. 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 <laughs> That'd be Bodgan. Uh, but Bogdan. Yeah. Uh, Bogdanovich. I must have completely that... ignored it because I said it straight. I know. Here. You didn't read. You don't read. <laughs> a guy that was a rookie last year now coming into yeah. his uh, second year, um, again, was massively efficient. Um, obviously, he's a guy that was hecked back in 2014. Uh, didn't come over right away. There was obviously, uh, you know, fights about his contract. Mm-hmm. Then he was trading from the Suns to the Kings in the Marquise, uh, Marquise Chris. Marquise Chris deal. Yeah. Um, and he came over. It was absolutely fantastic. Started 53 games for the Kings. Uh, shot 44% from the field, 39% from three on 4.2 attempts, um, 84% from the line, 11 points per game, near 12, um, three rebounds, three assists, um, and pretty much a steal per game. He was fantastic. I just think it's just going to be uh, you know an, an increase of what he, he did last year because again he's getting used to the NBA. He's going to you know obviously get more usage. Um, he's going to be a guy that's going to be trusted a little bit more. I think this guy not really is the limits for this kid, but is, he, it's a very bright future for uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich. Yeah, he's a super well-rounded player. I loved him coming into the NBA season last year. I, we, we gushed about this King's you know potential, and I think that he had been a huge help to kind of leading that offense in the right direction. Uh, De'Aaron Fox had early struggles, uh, and then late in the year looked clutch as all get out. Like So I think that Bogdan out there is a secondary ball handler, someone who um, is comfortable. He's a little older, so he's a little more calm like nature-wise compared to the rest of the kids out there. So I think that perfect fit, right team, right time, and I, I agree. I think that he's going to, you know, We'll see. We'll see slight increases in stats everywhere. I don't expect him to, like he's like Luca Light. I know everybody wants to make that comparing comparison because they're both white euros. So I'm just gonna get out of the way for the mm-hmm. comment section right away. But yeah, that's he. He doesn't have the passing ability of Luca or yeah. the vision of him. But the gameplay is actually they're not really alike at all. I'm just gonna toss that there. Just <laughs> well, to I, I mean, <laughs> I want to get it out of the way so they didn't do they're, it. They're, you know? uh, the thing with uh, at least Bogdan, I, I yeah. mean, he's he's he, he wasn't consistent enough. And I think that was the biggest thing that well, hurt you, him. We harp um, on young kids for consistency. Like, that's just the staple. And no, I, but I'm I saying, like, that's why I think he, he's going to improve yeah. and, and climb up the ladder is because he will get more consistent. All right, um, all I right. mean, you look at it, you look at his, you know, point. He had uh, 27 games where he scored under 10 points. And then he had eight games where he scored over 20. Um, yep. He had, you know, games where he had zero to four. He had 60 games where he had zero to four assists. But then he also had a game where he had 10 to 14 assists. Yep. Um, and also had a game where he had 17 games where he had five to nine assists. So, again, he didn't have that consistency of, right. you know, ball handling. He didn't have that consistency of touches. He didn't have the consistency of a shot I mean, falling. that lineup had no consistency as well. That, yeah. That's part of the Kings' problem. Mm-hmm. Like, you saw them swap people in roles. So, so. I think a guy in Bogdanovich, uh, the Kings one, 
Uh, again, consistency is going to be a massive key in his success this year. If he is more consistent, then I think he's going to be a guy that you know might be pushing up near the uh, you know the other you know, Bogdanovich Indiana. Uh, you know, spot or possibly the each one more spot or the Roko spot because again, this guy is extremely young. He has a lot of tools to work on, um, and he could be taking the next step if that team becomes more consistent. Um, but Ricky, we'll look at um, some other guys on this list, and one guy is now stepping into the uh, starting lineup for the San Antonio Spurs, and that's Rudy Gay, um, a team that is going to be very packed in tightly um, inside the arc. You look at Dejounte mm-hmm. Murray, a guy that really isn't a scorer um, at that point guard's position. We look at Demar Derozan, a guy that works heavily in the mid range, showed mm-hmm. a little bit of flash. Um, of consistency from three last year. Rudy Gay, a guy that works heavily in the mid-range. LaMarcus Aldridge, heavily in the mid-range. Paul Gasol, heavily in the mid-range. Um, how do you think this starting lineup with the San Antonio Spurs is going to work, and how do you think Rudy Gay fits into it? I think it's going to be, like, when you keep saying, like, you were just, like, mid-range, 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 the first thing I thought of was the thing I've been thinking about the Spurs for a little bit now is basically, is the NBA pa- going to pass them by? Where it's basically... The NBA, we look at right now, the three ball is king. Yep. If you can't have guys that can shoot the three ball, you're living in the olden days. And, like, not necessarily that the starting lineup is going to, oh, the Spurs don't make the playoffs and they're a bad team. No. Like, they made the playoffs without Kawhi. They can make the playoffs without Kawhi and DeMar DeRozan this year. But I just wonder if this team overall with the starting lineup, when they get to the playoffs, oh, now we're going up against teams with – elite three-pointers and more people that can shoot from three, and that's just where the NBA is right now. And Dave, you were kind of amazed with Rudy Gay's per. I think it was like uh, 11.5, and he played only, I think, it was, let me check his minutes. Uh, he only played 21.6 minutes per game. I mean, you look at his uh, per 36, 19.2 yeah, points his, per his game. His per is 18. 18. Yeah. Thank you for 18. correcting that. 18 in only 20 point, uh, <laughs> 21.6 minutes per game. Uh, you look at his per 36, 19.2 points per game, uh, 8.5 rebounds per game, 2.1 assists. Um, you also throw in 1.3 steals um, and 1.1 blocks in there as well. Um, he's a guy that maybe, or, or what do you think of his his uh, ability, or what do you think his stat line is going to look like with these this minute increase from going to 21? Uh, point six to starting more games, probably moving. Near yeah, 30. I mean, this you have to remember this last year was kind of the uh, let's see how he comes back from a devastating injury too. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was very much a you know off season of getting back in shape and then seeing testing him out there. Uh, he only played twenty one minutes a game, like you said. So I think at thirty minutes a game, we're gonna see him back. You know, back around that fifteen point a game marker, probably fifteen sixteen even. It really depends on like Demar Derozan and Aldridge though. That's the thing. Like this system, they really thrived going through Aldridge for the majority of last year with Kawhi out for the almost entirety, actually. Uh, so I think that adding Demar Derozan as a mid-range, like heavy usage score, I could see him staying it somewhere between you know probably 13 points a game, 14 points a game, because I look at their bench depth and the lack thereof at the wing. After losing slow mo, I think that well, that just means more opportunity for you, more more chances for you to go. They've got some young guys who haven't proven it. We'll see where they land. I think a lot of this is going to be on the Spurs system, like Ricky mentioned. It's mm-hmm. it's the old man system with Pop being the coach. So I don't know if you know Dejounte Murray got a lot of love his early time. So we'll see if the younger guys in this team get similar opportunities in their uh, first year, second year, or if he leans heavily on Rudy Gay's experience and and just honestly like impressive play coming back off of an injury. So I, I would lean heavily towards I'm buying in Rudy Gay. And outside of, you know, old guy Ricky Gay, and then looking at the other guys we haven't mentioned, a lot of them are guys that went... <laughs> did you just say Ricky Gay instead he of Rudy Gay? Ricky. Okay. I'm going to Ricky, that's why. Um, but looking outside of Rudy Gay... Like and you and me the, looked at each other, too. It's been a rough two segments. I'm sorry for listening to this podcast. I'll apologize. Um, but I, outside I know they drafted somebody. That's why I couldn't think of the name. Uh, Lonnie Walker. Lonnie Walker. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, another guy who has interesting potential athleticism, but yeah. Um, but looking outside of Rudy Gay and the older guys, there's a lot of guys that we haven't mentioned that have been in the league for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, and Will Barton and Rocco and Boyan Bogdanovich um, and also Etwan Moore and Tim Hardaway Jr. Who do you think is going to have the most impact on their team coming into this year, Ricky? Is it going to be a guy like Will Barton? Is it going to be a guy like Rocco, Boyan, uh, Etwan Moore, or Tim Hardaway Jr.? Will Barton. Because the thing I want to ask you with Will Barton okay. is not giving anything away of who took his spot, but just to pull the curtain behind, there was the guy who we're going to say at 10 
was tied with Will Barton, and it was a 2-1 vote that put Will Barton at 11. This is a guy that should that could be, I'll say, maybe should be a top 10 guy in these rankings. I don't know if he's really sh- he should be a top 10 guy. Well, he easily could uh, be. I, I put him at nine, um, but also there's a couple. Like, again, we talked about this. The top five, top well, top seven were really, mm-hmm. um, top eight. Top eight were really jammed in there for mm-hmm. sure, guys. And then outside of that, we all had everyone below him just thrown yeah, around. It, it is. It's, um, it's Like you said, it's so clustered together with a top mm-hmm. talent and a small forward. I think the thing with Will Barton, though, is that he needs to be able to separate himself. And I think one way that he could do that is become an elite point, an elite three-point shooter. He's a guy that shoots at 37%. Again, that's well above the NBA average, which I think is around 35. I think that moved up from 34. Yeah. It mm-hmm. used to be 34. I think it's now at 35. Yep. Um, but still, above league average, putting up 15.7 points per game. I think a big thing for him, though, is maybe it doesn't really need to be about the point percentages, but at least being serviceable defensively, which really no one on Denver is, yeah. uh, but at least being more of an elite three-point shooter because Jamal Murray is a fantastic three-point shooter. Um, we, you know, Gary Harris is a fantastic three-point shooter. If you can have Will Barton, you know, hit that near forty percent march mar- margin and hit, you know, uh, have Gary Harris be an excellent three-point shooter, Will Barton and uh, Jamal Murray, it's going to make that D- Denver team even more uh, impossible to stop. And, and yeah. offensively, they're going to be a monster. Um, I think Will Barton, at least his biggest thing is at least improving that three-point shot, being more consistent, and at least being a guy that the Denver Nuggets can go to when you know Jamal Murray's uh, youth is, is hurting him and when Gary Harris just isn't on that night. Mm-hmm. Will Barton being probably a fourth scorer, because, I mean, you still got to throw Jokic in there as well. Yeah. Um, being a fourth store, is scorer, if he can be more efficient and maybe not worry uh, more about the point totals, I mean, this Denver team scores a ton. So They're going to average, like, what, 120 a night this year? Yeah. Like, it's just stupid the amount and the pace they play at. And I think if he's, again, more efficient in that pace, that's going to make this team better. And oh, I think yeah. that's going to at least help his rankings because there's really nothing that I want more for him. I mean, you know, defensively, yes, but <laughs> that whole team, again, I'm wishing something defensively. Um, if he just becomes more efficient, he's a guy that I think does have top 10 potential because mm-hmm. when you're getting 16 a night from a guy who's shooting uh, 45, 40, and then 80, that's something that's incredible it's for a starter. Clip. So, yep. um, you know, again, if he's more efficient, I think that's what will put him over a guy that, uh, you know, made it into the top 10 with not getting things away. Um, I think people love uh, the guy who made it into 10's efficiency <laughs> um, and get blinded by his efficiency and possibly his stardom. Um, if yeah. We can use stardom oh, yeah. extremely Stardom's loosely. Stardom's the right word. Um, but Dave, answering the question, you know, Will Barton, Rocco, Boyan, I know one guy that you will go to is Rocco. What does Rocco need to do in, in this year of, you know, probably the second year of the process now becoming closer to completion? I'm, I'm going to say the, your favorite word of the day, consistency. This man started off the year hotter than anyone. He earned that contract. And then he was like, I'm going to be five of eight. I'm going to be one of seven. I'm going to be four of eight. I'm going to be one of seven again. Like he just bounced all over the place with his three point shooting. And I feel like part of that is just, he gets worn playing defense. Like he is their three and D guy. He is, he's excellent at it. He's earned it. But at the same time, he does not rest on defense. And it's one of those things where look at the matchups where he's playing against teams Sometimes he'll, he can play up. Other times you just see him visibly worn down mm-hmm. throughout games. Because once those and, legs get tired, it hurts yeah, to shoot. I was say, you watch the shots and there's nothing behind it. Mm-hmm. He just You watch it clang. I'm like, oh, mother, you should not be taking that <laughs> shot. You know you should be taking it. I don't care if you're wide open right now. Um, but no, like, he, he's an awesome piece to this team, and he's someone who uh, immensely helpful. But it was also the spot that they you saw them target in the draft because he was abused. In that uh, Celtics series, I mean, Ben Simmons was one who was exposed, but, like, he was abusing that Boston Celtics series because going up against young wings and you ran into the problem where he's good, but they have so many that when you're switching two mm-hmm. times an offensive set, three times an offensive set. There's no weak link in that exactly. in that armor. Exactly. So I think that that's the, the thing for him is his offensive consistency needs to be there regardless. So I don't know if it's conditioning. I don't know if it's just – more shot attempts that, you know, during the offseason practice, before game, whatever it is. But that shot consistency coming up, and, like, he, he's a stud. Like, there, this is a guy who came from practice squad to, you know, now he's got a four-year deal. It, it's yeah, awesome. Yeah, he went from practice squad to now a starter on a playoff team. Yeah. And one of the favorites in the Eastern Conference. Yeah. He survived the process. A big thing with him, though, is confidence. Because, yeah. again, he came in right away in the season and was one of the best three-point shooters yeah. in, in the league. And, again, it, it, was, it, it seemed like just confidence – Started to shake a little bit for some reason. Um, I know he was uh, inactive around December, 
Um, and, and he was, you know, to start off the season, he was shooting like 42% from three. He was um, high. He, I swear, for like the first couple weeks, he was like 47%. Something insane. It, fe- it felt like. I'm sure the numbers are actually lies, see. but. Um, point being, uh, he, he had good shooting. Really. No, not really. It, but, was around, it was always around 42, and then it, it took it took a massive note. Well, here, hold on. Uh, <laughs> we have time. Doing math uh, on the podcast. Yeah, right here. Uh, through the first, like, from, for the first month, right. he was shooting 48% from three. That's what I meant. Yeah, uh, see? 49, 48 about. on uh, 16 J- Jake's proud of me. I get a gold star from Jake. So congrats. Um, but yeah, Roko, I think a big thing is confidence. He yeah. came out hot right away, and again, maybe conditioning, uh, again, kind of losing some steam. Uh, but a big thing, I think, yeah. also for him is confidence. And I think that's one thing that, again, Philadelphia is going to gain um, throughout this season and throughout another year um, yeah. playing. They know what they were able to do last year. Well, now we're one year better. Yeah, you're um, no longer the surprise team that when you're knocking down kids mm-hmm. left and right with incredible shooting and playing guys, you know, 6'11 point guards are kind of surprising for teams how yeah. to handle. And maybe now that they, you know teams won't be shocked, maybe Philadelphia takes a step back. Jake, Boo. Yeah, Boo Jake, on you. Not saying it's not saying it's gonna happen, but possibly. And maybe they don't go on a fifteen game win streak at the end of the year and get you know shoot up all the way to what fourth in the Eastern Conference. Just saying they're fifty one Maybe they finish a fourth but are more consistent. Uh, uh I like I like the guy who actually finished like opposite of Rocco, which is uh Boyan. Like he finished the year as hot as anybody. Like he was impressive in that playoff series against uh the Cavs. Like his defense, his shooting shine through that series like it was victor oladipo's coming out party don't nothing's mm-hmm. gonna take that away from him but the surprise for a lot of people was seeing Boyan, who if you see him on the street does not look athletic at all and i know it's the white guy joke standard whatever i don't care like he was out there on every single switch guarding wings guarding anybody who came at him but not even guarding wings guarding lebron guarding as well. yeah i say guarding lebron you just say that i mean he, he was the lebron stopper basically and i know lebron's slower but yeah he was he was excellent and he kept them in games. He won them a game. Like that playoff series was just impressive all around. And I think that's why like his whole season was good, but ending on that note was just kind of like, damn. Yeah. Game three, 35, uh, 35 uh, minutes, uh, 70. 70- 73 percent that's crazy to say 73 percent from the field uh 77 percent from three um scored 30 points and also had a game score of 20.3 which was fantastic it's from boyan insane um, but that is going to wrap it up for 11 through 20 uh ran over again i feel like I've, we, we had the idea that we weren't going to talk this long uh for for these i'm rankings. gushing we, we about went these over kids. again Told you.